Hi, Prashant. Uh, hey, please, please join me in welcoming Dr. Prashant Rajan. Uh, Prashant is an engineer who went on to do his PhD in organizational communication from Purdue. I'm so I'm sure there's a story there, Prashant. You never you never got to it, but if there is time, maybe you can tell us how engineering yeah. to our com. Um, currently, Prashant is with uh, Ohio University, and he is investigating the design and use of ICT interventions in low resource settings, right? And he's here to talk to us about his work in Chhattisgarh. Yeah. Over to you, Prashant. Uh, this project started uh, with uh, me moving to Iowa State University. As a freshly minted PhD, I worked there as an adjunct and I got to be part of something called a Global Food Security Consortium, which is just a fancy term for a bunch of researchers from different disciplines that were all interested in issues related to food security. And hanging around with these people, I felt really motivated and excited, like I want to do something related to food security as well. What should I do? And uh, what I ended up doing was uh thinking about the ways in which food is accessed with dignity right like what does it mean for a person to buy food in what ways uh can a person buy food that ensures their well-being uh maybe by making sure the food is uh of good quality or it's quantitatively adequate but also making sure that the transaction itself occurs with dignity and this was all very different for me as Weber, we mentioned, I had a very different sort of career path before. Uh, I was an engineer, I studied material science. Uh, most of my research happened at uh, Argonne National Laboratories, which is a synchrotron source, a particle accelerator just outside of Chicago. I spent time as an intern at Eastman Kodak. Uh, there I got to be, I was lucky enough to be part of a team where organic light emitting diodes were invented. I, was, I didn't do any inventing, but I was lucky to work alongside the inventors uh, to help them design experiments that tested the properties of those uh, devices. So coming from this background and thinking about food security was a really, really big jump for me. And this transition really was a, uh, a matter of like thinking about very, very basic fundamental problems while working on some state-of-the-art state technology, really. So you're working at a synchrotron source. Uh, so you are really working with some amazing technology. And at the same time, you're catching a flight back home to India every year. Uh, I've been visiting India every nine months for the past 15 years. So in that time, to see that there's still people struggling for basic necessities like water, uh, food, sanitation, uh, I would run around talking to different people, asking them what can be done about it. And that uh, some of the, the answers I received helped me realize that it's not just an engineering perspective that can help. You need to understand why people live the way they do, why people choose uh, uh, certain things uh, and, and not others. And in fact, I am Ahmedabad was critical in this journey. Uh, my PhD research happened under the informal mentorship of Professor Anil Gupta. And I, got, I was lucky enough to spend quite a bit of time living in the uh, non-teaching staff quarters at IIM Ahmedabad. I've had a lot of Maggie at your cafeteria. Uh, and, and that was some of the, uh, those were some of the early formative experiences that helped me realize that I may not have an idea of how to help solve someone else's problem, but they may have a pretty good idea of how to solve their own problems, even if it is at a small scale, even if it is not really an optimal solution, they may still have some idea for, for what to do about a particular situation, some issue they might be facing. And that kind of became my way of doing research was moving away from engineering, trying to see, well, how do people try to solve problems they face? So uh, grassroots innovators like Arunachala Muruganantham, who you can see on the bottom right here of your screen, uh, folks like Bhanji Bhai Matuki, uh, who pioneered uh, small horsepower, like under 30 horsepower tractors in India and uh, to an extent even the world. Today, tractors in this segment are sold from Gujarat across the world to South America, North America, Africa, different parts of Asia. 
So the start to this happened with uh, Banji Bhai and many others like him, people who won't easily get a loan from a bank necessarily, who won't necessarily get their ideas easily tested, but who received support from uh, folks at the Hanivi Network, Vrishti, the National Innovation Foundation, and uh, whose stories then became known to people like me who are still struggling to understand like how do people go about living their lives when there are constraints on the resources available to them. Um, and this led me from studying engineering to studying user innovation, spent some time uh, in engineering education as well. I was fortunate that wherever I lived in the United States also tended to be rural areas. They were also fairly underserved. So I got an opportunity to sort of compare my experiences in uh, rural India with rural United States, some similarities there, some differences as well. And over all of these different areas of sub-disciplines or fields, one thing that I find myself like consistently experiencing is an interest in technology use and well-being where wherever communities are that are under-resourced. This doesn't necessarily always mean poor people, right? Sometimes people that are extremely well-off can also be uh, resource constrained. Uh, and sometimes people that are apparently economically poor can also have access to uh, substantial resources, as Professor Gupta always taught us. So, so this is kind of you know where I'm coming from. And uh, uh, a takeaway for, for this has uh, been for me, uh, you know, perhaps uh, encapsulated in the story uh, that Anil, uh, Professor Anil Gupta once shared, where he talked about. Uh, oh, sorry, this is actually Amrut Bhai Agrawal, an artisan from Pekhor. Uh, this is uh, the Western Gujarat in Saurashtra. And he saw a woman hunched over a well, unable to pull a bucket of water up. And she was extremely tired, so she couldn't pull it up, but she didn't want to let go either. Because letting go means she got to pull it up back all the way all over again. So uh, Amrut Bhai Agrawal being an agricultural artisan, he said, let me try and put a stopper to this pulley. Now, pulleys are what, like few thousand years old at least, maybe tens of thousands of year old technology. But at least in that part of our country, in Saurashtra, people hadn't really thought about putting stoppers on pulleys yet. And uh, when he did that, he gave that lady the freedom to choose. Whether she wanted to keep pulling or not was up to her, right? Think of it like somebody that's celebrating Lent or Ramadan or maybe for Parushan or some other Hindu festival, if somebody is fasting. So you're choosing to starve yourself, right? Or maybe you're engaging in some intermittent fasting because you have some goals for your body, your fitness. So there you're choosing to starve yourself of calories. But then there are people that are not eating because they don't have money to buy food or they don't have access to food, even if they have some money. So in each of both these cases, the person is starving, but in only one case, the person's choosing to starve. So what role can I as a researcher play in identifying specific features that a technology should have, kind of like this stopper that Amrut Bhai designed for the pulley that will increase or expand the user's freedom to choose. And if that's possible, if that's made possible, then I can say my user's well-being has actually improved in, in, in a sense, right? Because now they can actually decide whether or not to engage in a particular action. Okay, just want to take a pause here and ask if you folks can hear me. I know I was I, like my voice was getting damped down earlier. Is this better, Vibhavi? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, with food security, us all being in India, I don't think I need to spend much time on this on the on the slide and these numbers. Uh, we have about a quarter of the world undernourished, right? Like in the U.S., at least, we define a family as being food insecure when they don't know if they'll have food to eat next week, right? I don't know how we, uh, what other ways we might define food security as, but if we work off this definition, we have a very, very large number of people, even today, despite the PDS, despite all the advances being made, there are still a lot of undernourished people in, uh, in the world that happen to be living in India. We are way behind neighboring countries like Bangladesh, for example, when it comes to nutrition particularly when it comes to child nutrition, maternal health, all of these, uh, the data is out there. I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, the government certainly has tried to do something about this over the 70 years, that uh, 70 odd years that we've been a, a country, an independent nation. 
Uh, they try to give farmers uh, guaranteed prices. Over here in Chhattisgarh, where I am right now, the government is giving 2,500 rupees uh, 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 to the farmers. That's more than what they could hope to receive uh, in the open market. So the governments kind of become this monopsony, right? Like they are the only buyer of the, of the harvest, especially if it's paddy or wheat, and they guarantee the prices to the farmers. It really helps them out. But alongside this, in parallel, the government tries to do something with the grain, right? They say, okay, we'll procure it from the farmers, but now we're going to distribute it to the citizens. We'll have the millers process it for us. And this process grain, uh, maybe some other things like salt, sugar, uh, maybe some cooking oil, other things we can uh, distribute at highly subsidized prices uh, to the citizens, right? And it's a very, very large scale activity. Uh, the government, uh, over the 15 years, I've been learning about this uh, system. It's about 1% to 2% of our GDP annually, right? Depending on who's in charge, how much money they want to put into it. And this is very different than how things are done in other parts of the world. In the United States, for example, where I also study food security, um, rationing happens, but and uh, food subsidies are provided, but they happen to be cash subsidies. So you get these food coupons uh, that you can use to buy groceries at a subsidized price. Our government is doing it in kind. When it's doing this in kind, obviously there's going to be a lot. There are going to be a lot of inefficiencies introduced in the system. You can uh, blame whoever you want for it, but the fact is. Barely 40% of the grain meant for the most vulnerable of our citizens was actually reaching them as recently as maybe five years ago, right? That's where the, the last data is that I have looked at. And that's how bad the situation was. So in Chhattisgarh, where I was working, the government had done uh, some things to uh, digitize the back end. So they try to make things better in the value chain where the procurement is happening from the farmers. They were trying to do this also with the la last mile distribution uh, where the citizen is going to come to the ration shop and they're going to buy the rice. In that transaction, they were trying to make some improvements, right? So, the, uh, you know, these losses that I was talking about earlier, only 40% reaching, most of this is because of theft, yeah? Most of it is because it's... Uh, very, very sort of profitable to not give grain uh, 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 through the prior price shop and instead sell it on the open market. Yes, there are errors related to inclusion and exclusion of citizens as well, but they're a very, very small fraction. And that matters as we'll see later in this talk. And of course, there are losses related to the logistics of like, you know, distributing the grain. There's losses related to that as well. But most of the losses, uh, uh, as has been documented very consistently over the last 20 years, happen to do with people stealing it, the food that's meant for people. So this is kind of where I saw a role for, uh, you know, the work that I was doing. My interest was in technology adoption. I'm very interested in how users innovate. Remember, that kind of my background. But here I had a chance to like see the other, uh, see users in other forms. For example, in this hand that you see in the photograph to your right, that's the person that's responsible for authenticating the beneficiary's identity and then uh, alloc allocating them the grain for that month, right? That person gets to decide whether this woman who, see, who you see goes hungry or not that, uh, for the, that next uh, 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 two weeks at least. So this woman's like food security situation for the next two weeks depends on this person and how he treats her, right? So it's not that we don't have food available in drawing room conversation across Ahmedabad and other parts of India. You will hear this constantly, right? Ki khana to bahut hai. Hamare paas to dunya mein itna khana nahi banta jitna hamare paas. It's true. We do have like a lot of food. So it's not about making food available, which is another important metric related to food security. It's about access. And when it comes to access, people usually focus on, hey, is there like enough food available for this individual? Is there like, is this food nutritious for them? And these are important questions too. But I saw there was very little I could do about this, right? Like I can't tell the government to supply high quality protein uh, to its citizens. In fact, the government chooses in many parts of India not to do that, not to give protein rich food to its citizens because vegetarianism. But we'll leave those concerns aside and we'll focus on this uh, word dignity, right? Like when I'm going to buy food, what does it mean to buy that food with dignity, right? 
And here are some uh, uh, sort of sample quotes from the people that I would talk to when hanging out at these fair price shops, right? And remember, these are like, I haven't just pulled this out of thin air. I would, like, this is more than six years of like hanging out in fair price shops. Consistent, like, you know, jate hai, milta hai, lekin kankad hai, usme illi pada rehta hai, there are worms in it. I, I know there's a different place I can go, but I can't find that place, I can't go to that place because I am only allowed to buy grain from this particular store. What should I do? So this is one way your this your dignity of access is being compromised. You're not being given food. You're being sold stones and worms mixed with some grain and that's become your food, right? Another way it uh, is really troublesome is that, if, you know, when you think about who goes shopping for grain, whether it's a ration shop or whether it's a fancy Reliance Fresh or whatever, Seven to nine times out of ten, it's the female in the household that's doing. And and if you, and if you go there and you're standing across the counter, about nine point nine out of ten times, it's the man that's selling the grain to you, at least at the ration shop. So there's lots of opportunity to be discriminated against, to be creeped out, to be even denied food. Kalao, matao, dena hi nahi hai. Ye bhi suna hai maine ki denge hi nahi tumko. Chale jao yahan se. Six, like back in the day, this used to be an actual thing. People could get away with this. The shopkeeper could actually tell the woman, don't come. I won't sell to you. Just go away. Or the easy way you can... Don't, don't open the shop. So people have to keep coming back. Then they get tired. You give up. All of this is for maybe 750 rupees of your subsidy. So you're losing... Eight hours of your day, you're standing in a queue, waiting, maybe the shop will open. So you're losing one whole day's wages. So that's nearly 900 rupees, right? If you are until there. And you are for what for 750 rupees worth of subsidy? How does this make sense, right? Now, from the beneficiary standpoint, this made like zero sense. And they just wanted their food. They didn't care about what you do, biometrics, from the shopkeeper standpoint, everybody I spoke with in the bureaucracy, they were like, these shopkeepers are very corrupt. Inki galti hai, ye log aise karte hai. Aise assumption ban gaya tha. Halaki baat, sir, kuch hat ke sahi bhi thi. It was true that the, the intermediary, some of, many of them were uh, engaging in fraud and they were stealing grain men for the citizens. But not all of them were. A lot of them didn't want to do that. But they didn't have a choice. Because... Bahubali hai. Because there is a corporator in the local ward. Jiske ghar pe shadi hai. Jisko chahiye ki shadi ke liye kuch quintal shakkar release ho jai. What are you going to do about it? Kuch nahi kar sakta. You have to release it. But you are still the face of a system that doesn't work for the most vulnerable of your users, for the citizens that really need it. So obviously you become the villain for them. So these are both the users that are of interest to us, right? This intermediary is that shopkeeper. They're facilitating the transaction. The beneficiary is kind of like an end user and they are undertaking the transaction in the hope of getting the food. So about 2012, 13, uh, the NIC, the National Informatics Center in Chhattisgarh, came up with these really cool smart cards. They were making smart cards in the name of the female head of household. And uh, just like, you know, your regular credit card transaction or a debit card transaction, this transaction will occur. And it will uh, can give, give you an updated record of whatever is balanced. So maybe you're entitled to 20 kilograms of rice and you bought five today, so 15 is left over. But the other important thing they wanted to do was, if I'm locked to the location, then I can still be denied, right? So they decided, let's try and give the users the freedom to choose when, where, and how, to, how, to, how much to buy. Right, so this freedom they wanted to give. And the question became, is this going to work? That was kind of the main thing because as government is not lacking for ideas or resources, but they need to know that this particular uh, system would work. And that's kind of where I became useful to them. And uh, I got, I spent time doing archival work, trying to understand, well, how, what does it mean to buy food through the PDS? What does it mean to use technology in the public distribution system? Are there policies that impact what kind of technology can be used, when it can be used? Right? What was the state of food access before we started giving people smart cards? 
right? Started doing some meetings, early meetings with different stakeholder groups to understand XFN is just cross-functional stakeholder. So what are their goals? What are they trying to get done here? What are their assumptions and so on, right? So these were our primary stakeholders, the bureaucrats with the Department of Food and Civil Supplies. They were the ones really sort of executing the policy and some ways even giving it direction. Uh, the senior scientist associated with the National Informatics Center, who was really the owner of this product, if you want to think of it in uh, sort of commercial terms or tech parlance. There were senior software engineers who had wrote, written the code that was used to run transactions on these machines. And they developed the database for the, for recording the transactions. And then there were all these field engineers whose job was, Chalo, let's train the shop keepers to use this technology, right? And each of these stakeholders had slightly different questions. For example, the bureaucrats were like, should we expand this pilot project? They were for it. It's not that they were against, but it's a question, right? Because you can put your resources elsewhere too. And for the senior scientists, they were interested, does this improve quality of food access? And they already had data for some of, uh, to some extent for these questions. But if it was even able to, if we, if we were able to show that, look, we can improve the quality of food access, how do we expand this at scale? That becomes a problem, right? Texas get has over 9,000 fair price shops that are serving at that time 5.4 million houses. So how do we roll out at scale? So for the senior software engineers, when I talk to them, they would be they would talk about metrics. They were interested in them. They were also working on developing some. And then the field engineers, they were in actually contact with the shopkeepers, with the beneficiaries. So their concerns were really sort of you know close to the ground. They were thinking. Well, why would the shopkeeper want to adopt this if it cuts curtails their ability to engage in black marketing? Uh, how will their business be impacted, right? All of these different questions, my job became uh, to translate into some kind of a research question. So this question about like, well, will the shopkeepers resist adopting these smart cards and point of sale machines? How do we roll out at scale became the first study which talked about, uh, which tried to look at, well, what are the factors that influence adoption? by the shopkeepers, the intermediaries. And these, these questions about metrics and, you know, well, does the quality of food access improve and so on, became a second study where I tried to measure food access and business performance, right? I'll talk about the first one. Here I ran a survey because this happened while the in intervention was still in pilot stage. So it's very helpful if you run a survey because bureaucrats tend to be convinced by numbers especially statistical significance works really well for them. And if you can, are trying to identify factors influencing rollout at scale, again, you want to be able to demonstrate some statistical significance and you should be able to say, hey, look, this might work at uh, a larger scale across the population. Also, it wasn't just a question of usability of the interface, right? We weren't just studying, hey, interface is easy to use. That's an important question too, and we studied that as well. But at this point, what I'm sharing with you was more, should we continue with this? And what is going to impact if we do, right? So we want to build our stakeholders' confidence about how representative our insights are. So surveys kind of became helpful in terms of not only quantifying the insights, but making sure that they were representative of a larger population. So what did this mean in practice? Going to shopkeepers, showing them the questionnaire, making sure that they can understand the words, so making sure that beneficiary is translated, for example, as card dharak. Card dharak matlab kya hua, jiske paas card hai. Beneficiary ka matlab kuch alag hai. So the way people understand the beneficiary in the shop is a card dharak. So small changes like that matter as well. There were bigger changes that needed to be made. So translating the questionnaires from English to Hindi was an important thing. Running pilot studies was uh, sort of a related activity to examine the validity of the content in the questionnaires. Once that was done, we reached out to all 218 intermediaries that were participating in the pilot. This was in the districts of Dor, Belai, uh, Raipur, and Mahasam. These were the three places where the project was uh, being implemented as a pilot. And 191 said, Chalo karte hai. 179 actually returned the, the questionnaires, of which 166 were usable right just to give you a sense for like oh i'll go and conduct research if any budding research is here this is kind of what the process looks like when you're in the field at least in success 
Uh, and uh, some demographics, some descriptives here on your right, uh, as expected, uh, uh, overwhelming majority of the intermediaries were male. Uh, and uh, some of them were under 30, but many of them were over. Uh, the education was fairly uh, limited, although a third still had studied college level, the rest were like 12th standard or less. And uh, a lot of people had concerns about the experience with technology. Okay, and uh, if you're thinking this is before smartphones came around, okay? So smartphones weren't a thing in such a way, at least at that time. Today they are. Today it's a totally different scene. But at that time, not every salesperson even had a smart, uh, phone, leave alone a smartphone. You didn't even have mobile service in many, many parts. So will they be able to use a digital technology if they have not, never previously used it was a concern. So this was another variable that kind of mattered. And all of these we sort of uh, uh, crunched into a model that looked at, well, is this useful to my intermediary salesperson? Is it easy for them to use? Uh, what do their friends, their family members, their peers think about them using it? And what kind of uh, training and support are they receiving? What are their attitudes toward it? Remember? So we're just measuring our users' attitudes. That's it. We're not checking behavior yet. And because it's a mandatory adoption scenario, we are measuring satisfaction, not intention to use, right? They don't have a choice. They have to use it. Uh, so we are trying to measure not their intention. Will they want to use it? We're measuring how satisfied they are. Why should it matter? Mandatory to do it. Technology kaam kare, ye sabit karna bohat mushkil It's very difficult to ensure the technology works as intended. Technology kaam nahi kare, ye demonstrate karna bohat hi asaan hai, bohat sarat hai. For example, weighing machines were used with sensors that would transmit the data, how much is being weighed from the shop to some central location. Usko kaise beat karna hai, ek patthar dal do andar. So then you can underweigh your commodity as much as you want. Small thing, right? So very easy to make sure a technology doesn't work as intended. Very difficult to make sure it works exactly as intended, right? All these concerns ki yaar ye salespersons thode buzurg hain, unse nahi ho payega, their technology experience is poor, they are not educated. I, I put them in a moderating factors, right? So they are kind of having an impact on the relationship between this variable over here and this dependent variable of interest. And uh, the analysis was on using partial least squares uh, sexual equation modeling. Uh, if you, this term is new to you, definitely make a note of it because it's super cool. You don't have to worry about sample size so much. Your residual distributions don't have to be normal. It's very forgiving as, an, as a technique for analysis, especially when you're, a, you know, one, one or two person sharp like I was at the time and trying to collect and analyze data. This is super helpful. Uh, and we did both direct and indirect effects, tested the hypotheses. And we found, yes, it's true uh, that uh, all these factors, many of them have a significant impact, but the training and support didn't exert a significant impact for some reason. That wasn't important. But what are people saying? How is it useful? How is it how is it easy to use? All of these things matter to A, whether I'm satisfied with it, and B, whether I'm willing to continue using it if I'm offered a choice, right? And this question about like, technology use and all this, yeah, those things also matter, except in the opposite direction. The older my intermediary, the less educated my intermediary, the more excited they were to use it. So this was kind of a little bit confusing. It's like, okay, so to bol rahe the, wo factor to matter kar rahe, but direction ulta hai. So aisa kyun ho rahe? And turns out, uh, and this kind of where like the, the knowing a little bit, being a jack of trade kind of helps. So uh, moving from survey, we kind of went in the field, we interviewed the intermediaries because we were right there. And uh, for the younger salespeople, social influence was really important. Because when you see that you technology, you a screen, you are doing something, you are doing something, you are very cool. So you have a little reputation, you have a little bit of knowledge, so it feels good to you. For the older uh, intermediary, now for the first time, you are not struggling. Because when the politician comes, who Bahubali wala jo story bataya tha mein, wo jab aate hai aur bolte hai, chalo do quintal chakkar release kar do, aap keh sakte ho, sorry sir, ye mujhse nahi ho sakta, card lagta hai, transaction complete karne ke liye. So, thodi apne reputation ke in, waha bhi bacha hai. And equally importantly, jo kaam hai aapka, the inventory management which you have to do, 
the stocks which you have to declare, the new stock which you have to request from the warehouse. These processes became semi-automated. So it became easier for you to do your work and the, the tool is actually helping. And this was especially helpful to those that were less educated because now you just had to click on things instead of doing things in Likhet every time. So the impact, yes, will the older, less educated intermediaries resist that option? This was a concern that our stakeholders had raised. The answer was no. In fact, it was it was the opposite, right? The older, the less educated are intermediary, more excited to use the technology. Now, how to expand one suggestion that we were able to come up with was social influence matters so much, right? You have like maybe four field engineers. Usme aap double bhi kar doge, to eight log honge. Aapke paas 9,000 locations. What do you do? Try and get the intermediaries to train each other. So we developed local language training materials. My partner and collaborator is from Chhattisgarh and speaks Chhattisgarhi. So they were able to actually create local language training materials. I was able to assist them in doing that and in, in so doing, create trust circles of a sort that could help uh, people that were new to this learn how to uh, use the point of sale machine for managing transactions, right? Now comes the question of like, hey, how did this affect uh, service quality? How did this affect business performance? So we had access to the back end, right? We had the, the transaction database. We had a, just under 4 million records, uh, which represented all the transactions over two years. So what I did was I queried different uh, data tables within the database to construct a single transaction table, which will have a record of each transaction along with who did it, what's their ration card uh, color. So I know whether the Antyoday hai, economic status so below poverty line above poverty line kaise hum unko bifurcate kare wo ho saka unka location kaha hai rural hai urban hai where did they buy and where did they use to purchase right kyunki aapne ye nahi freedom di hai ki aap kahi bhi ja ke khareed lo par kya log iska istemal kar rahe hain are people actually choosing to buy elsewhere or are they just going to the same place they used to so this helped me create matrices for each month where like the column and the row are individual location and the number represents the number of households that went from location i previously they were buying in location i but now they are buying in location j okay so i created these matrices uh, this is example of some tables i can spend time on this later if you any of you want to know the details but these are the kind of uh, sort of numbers we were able to come up so we were able to calculate what fraction of our users are actually going somewhere else so they're utilizing this portability as it were. And in the urban areas, up to just under 30% of the people were going somewhere else, among those that are classified as below poverty line. Antyoday jine kaha jata hai. And our urban areas, mein, this number was lower, but it was still like significantly high for the above poverty line people. Even they were choosing to transact somewhere else. If you go to the villages, this number will drop significantly. Village may aapko ek dukaan hota hai, zada zada do. Or wahaan par bhi lagbag 3-4 taka loog kahi aur ja rahe hai. Toh hum loog ja ke poochte dhe ki, bhai aap kahi aur kyu ja rahe ho, yahaan gaon mein hai dukaan. Toh jawaab milta tha, people would say that we can go elsewhere because we have work elsewhere. We go to the town for work and we have to do this once a month. And the quality of the roads are better between the town and our village and sometimes even within the village. And village may, for whatever reason, equation bigger gaya hai, ab nahi jamti, gachan dukaan walon se. So we are, we don't have to deal with that zig zig. We can just go and buy our food elsewhere. The quality is also actually sometimes better in the cities than what we get in the villages. So now we were able to show this part. Ki bhai, aapne feature de di, aap freedom de di, logon ko use ki karte hain, karte hain. Ab business performance pe kya asar ho raha hai, ye sawal bach raha hai. So this visualization shows you individual shop locations. So each number is one fair price shop. And the y-axis is one month. And now we are seeing a sell go in red means local business They are losing business, losing customers. You see a sell going in green, it means the they're gaining customers. They are actually gaining business. If it stays yellow, then not neither loss nor gain in business. All right. We went to individual uh, store locations and we dropped GPS lat longs. So now for Raipur city, 
we were able to see which are the locations which are doing better. Again, green, bigger circle means business is good. Small orange circle means that the job is done. So on the outskirts, of course, we can see circles are becoming smaller. Outskirts, so maybe people don't prefer going that far. But you go past, you go into the city, you can see that there are shops in front of you. One is good, one is bad. Why? So now you have a way to kind of target location rather than just sending inspectors at random to places and then terrorizing the shopkeepers. Then they pay off the inspector. Then you have to send an inspector for the inspector. What you have now is an opportunity to actually uh, see, oh, this particular place is uh, 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 facing some issue. Maybe they are not receiving the uh, grain on time from the warehouse. Maybe they're not treating their customers properly. Something is going on. What is it? We can go and actually check out. And, you know, so far, all the literature I would read, whether it's from, uh, you know, the good folks in IIT Delhi, uh, uh, Dr. Kera and others, whether it's people in the government, uh, there's, there's big debate, right? Like, oh, we should have PDS, we should not have PDS. Uh, some people are saying, yes, we should, because like we need to help the needy, right? And then the other side is like, no, we need like market uh, liberalization. People should get cash and then free market when you buy it, it's all inefficient. Hai. So it was always like this either or sort of uh, debate that I, I would encounter when reading articles on the page, doing all that archival work. But what I was seeing in practice in Chhattisgarh is that this is a complete government controlled monopoly. Each and every fair price shop is technically officially owned by the government. They give the charge as something akin to the franchise model to different women, self-help group, one Raksha Samiti, hoti ye, hoti ye, wo hoti ye, but actually, Sarkar ke naam pe pura chal raha hai danda, jo individual private players chala rahe hai. So, aapne ek vaisi circumstance mein jahan government monopoly hai, logon ko freedom di chunne ki kaha jana hai, jis tarah aap dousre ATM chale jao ke, agar aap jahan gai waha ATM kaam nahi kar raha ho, aap dousre ATM chale jao ke. So we were able to see that you can create market-like conditions in a state-controlled monopoly. If you can help technology that you have features that increase users' freedoms. Remember that lady's example pulling the water from the well, right? So she should be able to choose. That's the simple thing, right? So uh, we had a bunch of other metrics related to average number of trips. Those came down from around two to less than 1.5. Uh, uh, there was a uh, high one in five stores in Raipur city shut down when this first came out. So definitely the pilot project received uh, sent from the powers that be and uh, it was cleared for expansion across the state, right? But the biggest impact for me was when I would talk to the shopkeepers, you know, where people were standing eight hours in the hot sun in May to get those 750 rupees of subsidy, now there is a matka with water. Now there is sabun being sold alongside the, the, the grain. Now there is a chair for people to sit. You know, small things like this, they make a difference to the dignity of food access, right? Not being cheated is also part of it. Having female workers there to help make things easier for the female customers. So this is the impact. इसके अलावा काफी सारे जो यू नो जाने माने लोग हैं उन्होंने अच्छे लेटर्स लिखे वी वर एबल टू गेट अ फ्यू स्टूडेंट्स ग्रेजुएटेड विद देयर मास्टर्स सम अंडर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स वर एबल टू डू देयर ऑनर्स थीसिस प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन दिस वी वर एबल टू गेट सेवरल आर्टिकल्स पब्लिश दे वर वेल साइटेड सो वो सब तो हमारा जो निजी जो फायदा हुआ वो तो था ही दे वर इनवाइटेड टॉक्स गिवन गॉट अ फेयर बिट ऑफ कवरेज इन द मीडिया एज़ वेल but made so many mistakes, right? Like I was a very, very poor in early career academic. Uh, so I thought I have to do everything myself. But instead, what I should have done is hire some researchers, especially for data collection. Har ek survey mein khud se jaake bharwa ke laya. Aur agar koi mere saath hai, to wo alag. Ye nahi karne ki zarurat thi. To par karna pada us baatos. I could have had fewer items on the scales, but I was very afraid of reliability problems. Because I was fresh out of grad school. I was like, reliability is important. So uh, I had very, very over long question marks. could have been shorter. I could have saved that time I, and identified some other usability challenges that we identified much later. For example, we were able to pivot toward uh, the use of tablets instead of point of sale machines. That could have happened sooner. 
Uh, I wanted to create a real-time transaction dashboard based on my uh, work, some of the uh, visuals I showed you. That would have been helpful, but I never got around to doing that because uh, my academic work didn't require me to do that. And uh, we had the data that could have actually helped us estimate household nutritional intake, which is unheard of. Like objective measures of household nutrition in India are still very rare or almost non-existent. It's still based on the people ya kitna logon ne pds ka kitna uthaya ye isse guess karo ye do hi tarike main chalte hain aaj bhi 2022 mein india mein logon ko khana mil raha hai ki nahi ye pata karne ke liye we had household level data on how much each family was purchasing this could have been used to estimate nutritional intake with a much higher degree of accuracy it still can be done just haven't done it yet haven't got around to it doing other stuff uh, what we did do was uh, get into image analysis because that's kind of the interesting part where the grain, uh, where a lot of fraud occurs in, the, in that value chain, the supply chain, is when the grain is assessed by somebody representing the government and that person says, ye grain saap hai, ya ye grain achi quality ka nahi hai. And this process, believe you me, still happens manually even today. Abhi kar se, and it's still the same old process. Dek, bora rahega, wo bore mein उसमें से 10 ग्राम चावल में से वो कितने कंकड़ है कितना टूटा है कितना गीला है ये एस्टीमेट करते हैं लॉट ऑफ स्कोप फॉर एरर लॉट ऑफ स्कोप फॉर लाइक यू नो ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ ग्राफ्ट एंड फ्रॉड इन दैट सिचुएशन सो वी वर एबल टू डेवलप अ प्रूफ ऑफ कांसेप्ट ऐप वेयर यू कैन टेक अ पिक्चर ऑफ द ग्रेन सैंपल एंड इट विल गिव यू एन इमीडिएट एस्टीमेट अ न्यूट्रल थर्ड पार्टी एस्टीमेट ऑफ द ग्रेन क्वालिटी सो दैट्स व्हाट वी एंडेड अप डूइंग there's other things I can talk about, but I think I'm already over time, so I want to take a pause here. Thank you all, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Thank you, Prashant. That was, I mean, you know, wonderful. First of all, wonderful study, great ground level impact to starters. You know, very, it's 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 really great when academia, when academicians can actually do stuff that that helps them understand what's happening in ground reality and also create an impact in one way or the other. So this is. This is fantastic there. So I have to say, uh, I mean, there is something you said for data collection. Uh, I get what you were saying when you said you need not have gone and filled every survey yourself, which of course is obvious, but also it's really nice to meet somebody who is not outsourcing. Uh, <laughs> okay, US yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, that's that's a separate conversation another time. Uh, yeah, we do have a couple of minutes. Any? Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, I know we have some PhD students here. Uh, we got. I got my chat open as well. So if you want to just type your question in chat, that's cool too. Yeah, that's actually. Um, also, if you could share, I think your email ID would be there, but for, for those who yeah, yeah. Uh, will, get write you later for uh, to, to check, so that would be, thanks. Oh, thanks. I send it to you. Uh, I should send it to everybody. Oh. Yes, send it to everybody. Any questions uh, for Prashant? So, um, so what is, uh, you're still in Chhattisgarh, you're still continuing. So what is the next uh, next step for you in terms of research, in terms of the study? Are you still? Um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm certainly at a turning point. Um, I am finding that, I'll just, I'll just be cards on the table with all of you here, but uh, I'm finding that there is a lot Side of the academy than inside the academy, and uh, I see internet connection unstable. So now you are I You can. I missed something that you. Said. Oh okay, yeah yeah. I'm just saying like uh, I'm I'm at a stage in my career where I've played the academic game long enough. Like it's been fun. It's been very sort of enjoyable. I've learned a lot. I've I've always been lucky, even though I didn't have uh, formal mentors. The that were like an advisor of sorts that were really there to like help me uh, carve a path or anything, but I always had amazing informal mentors. So uh, uh, I've enjoyed the ride, but I think it's coming to a close. I think uh, I'm, I'm reaching a point where I want to do this kind of work, uh, but I want to do it, uh, uh, you know, free from that three prong load that every academic has to carry research, bhi karo, teaching, bhi karo, service, bhi karo. So, 
जरीसा ये तो प्रोजेक्ट चल ही रहे हैं आज भी आई हैव अनदर सेवन स्लाइड्स आई कैन शेयर अबाउट वर्क दैट माय स्टूडेंट्स डिड दैट फॉलोड व्हाट आई हैव डन दे डिड इवन बेटर दे फाउंड इवन कूलर थिंग्स देन आई डिड रिलेटेड टू द डिजाइन ऑफ द इंटरफेस इटसेल्फ एंड हाउ दैट कुड बी इंप्रूव्ड सो या देयर इज दैट um this project could definitely do with some continuance uh, when aadhar came along suddenly uh, things changed this portability went away for a, for quite a while people's lives were tremendously disrupted because now they had to go back to where they didn't want to go so that definitely happened and i guess that was kind of the the big sort of point we were trying to make in those years is आपको बहुत महंगी बायोमेट्रिक सर्वेलेंस वाली टेक्नोलॉजी की कोई जरूरत ही नहीं है अगर आपका गोल यह है कि आप 11 डॉलर की सब्सिडी समय पर लोगों को पहुंचा दो अगर दैट्स योर गोल इफ ऑल यू वांट टू डू इज लाइक हेल्प पीपल फाइंड लाइक 750 फिफ्टी और डॉलर रुपीज वर्थ ऑफ फूड एवरी मंथ लाइक दैट कैन बी डन यूजिंग मच सिंपलर टेक्नोलॉजी दैट आर मच मोर रोबस दैट आर मच लेस लाइकली टू फेल दैट आर मच लेस लाइकली टू बी कॉम्प्रोमाइज यू नीड टू गिव पीपल मल्टीपल मोड्स ऑफ ऑथेंटिकेशन right you can't just be many people still buy on proxy you know they don't go themselves because they are not well or they are busy so they send their neighbor ka bachcha to pick it up and these kind of proxy transactions should be allowed to happen because the illegal proxy transactions are very few and far between they are a negligible fraction of the total transaction number of transactions so so those are kind of the points that we were able to make at that time that look it's okay you can be pro market or anti market or whatever but like everyone should agree that the 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 people at the base of the so called pyramid as abominable as that term is they should have more freedom to choose when where and how to transact with the state right thank you nice prashant um yeah. if there aren't any questions then let's let's call it a day thank you oh kushbu has a question kushbu yeah go ahead kushbu Yes, hi, hi, Dr. Rajan. I am sorry, I could only join fifteen minutes late into this uh, because of network issues. So no I problem. wanted to ask, like, why did you take Chhattisgarh as your target uh, for this? Mera tusralewa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the, I know okay. the answer to the question. Yeah. Mera tusralewa par wo ek baat thi nahi, but seriously, kya raho? The one of the reasons was that. Well, I happen to. This is like you know how serendipitous the whole process of visa. It's just like I'm hanging out there, so I'm visiting my in-law. I'm like, hey, this thing's going on. This is very interesting. Like, what, what, what's happening here? So it started off with like very uh, uh, organic conversations. The district collectors say, "I'm talking to you." One day, FCI ke manager se baat kar rahe ho. Dusre din, so yahan jo local state jo naan nagre kaapurti nigam hoti hai, unke kuch kare karta hoon se aapki baat ho gayi. फिर आप आपने फूड सेक्रेटरी से थोड़ा समय ले लिया उनसे बात हो गई और दूसरे लोग तो यू स्टार्ट लर्निंग यू नो काइंड ऑफ गोल्स इन अ काइंड ऑफ चेन सैम्पलिंग वे फ्रॉम वन टू अदर टू द अदर एंड देन यू स्टार्ट सीइंग हे देयर आर सो मेनी डिफरेंट थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन हियर व्हाट इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इट जस्ट सो हैपेंड कंप्लीट कोइंसिडेंस दैट दैट द गवर्नमेंट वाज इंप्लीमेंटिंग दिस स्मार्ट कार्ड बेस्ड पॉलिसी राइट देन एज अ पायलट प्रोजेक्ट it's uh, the centralized real time online electronic public distribution system where chatisgarh was really a trailblazer it was a pioneer chatisgarh was doing these things way way before many other states even thought about it so i was lucky is what i'm trying to say that i happened to be in a location where there was some really interesting technologies being tried out to improve you know, food access i was interested in those projects and uh, uh, because i had family there i had in laws there i had a base so i didn't have to just stay in a guest house or a hotel all the time i could have like some place to stay at times and then from there move out uh okay sir thank you are you no are you thinking of expanding your study into any other we area? did we did actually my collaborator uh, her students uh, have gone to punjab so that happened this time i have been doing work in maharashtra so different okay. areas for sure yeah yeah all right thank you thank you so much yeah. no problem hi ankur hi prashant uh, sorry i sorry i miss i sort of had to go in and out of your talk um, no problem i was just uh, curious to i mean this the point that you were making i mean you know there is this debate yes between john bres ritika khera and you know kartik muldidharan and uh and that group and you know who been really in some ways pushing aadhar and who pushed aadhar i mean mm-hmm. what in your sense is sort of 
you know, the, the political economy that drives this uh, fetish towards uh, these technological solutions. I mean, even not that you are proposing something which is not technology based. So, you know, so that if anybody wants to say, hey, we are doing something high tech, you know, one could use your solution as well or, or you know, this, the simpler one. I mean, what explains this fetish to, uh, you know, go towards these modes, which ultimately we, we and we all know and we've, we've all seen this repeatedly, right, in terms of sort of the burden that they put on people and the disruptions that they cause. Um, I, I'm just curious from your interactions with the bureaucracy at, at the different levels, what do you see and what do you hear? I see fear. Mostly, uh, if I go to, uh, and I'm talking about things back in 2013. So nine years ago, if I had gone to any Chhattisgadi and I had uh, asked them to pull their wallet out and show and taken out everything, I would have got at least five different forms of identification from them. That was nine years ago. This is before Aadhaar and all of that. So uh, identification ki to kabhi koi kami thi nahi. So, uh, that was a uh, tremendous cost to the country, to the state as well. So, you have to do it, but you have to do it the system or you have to do it with the system that you have to do it with the other way. So, you have to kind of think about like, hey, is this kind of helping people in any way on the ground or is this making things more complicated for them? At least for the first couple of years after uh, the reseeding of the database happened, um, their portability was completely stopped because you couldn't have uh, beneficiaries, citizens, residents transacting wherever they wanted while you were also reseeding the database and trying to figure out who all ought to be in it. This is also fundamentally a political exercise. Chhattisgarh is uh, a state that's done reasonably well among the newer states in the Republic. And a big part of the reason it's done well is because successive governments have focused on the needs of farmers and have also tried to focus on issues, what appear to be populism, populist uh, uh, tasks uh, to those that live outside such areas, but which are basically very critical over here. What is the rate of What is the rate of These things are critical. They decide who wins elections here. And it's always a tussle between the two main political parties in the country over here. It's always neck and neck. And every time the person that wins has consistently wins on the plank of helping these two categories of people, those that grow food and those that are needing to purchase it at highly subsidized prices. Um, when it comes to the policies themselves, though, uh, the, what the bureaucrat is able to do is simply implement. Like, And uh, you know they are in a very difficult situation because you can make a call today. Like there are um, people doing amazing things out here. There are people that are trying to implement distributed ledger technology for land record uh, uh, maintenance. But you can make like really radical choices today, whether it turns out for better or worse. But 30 years from today, somebody can catch you by the collar and bring you back. And they can say, hey, aapne wo decision kab liya? Wo kyun liya? Aapko usse kya niji fayda hua? So this dar ke wajay se, there is a lot of CYA going on constantly, if you know what I'm saying. It's just con people being very, very concerned. And in the midst of all this, I applaud Chhattisgarh's bureaucracy from at least that time for especially Dr. Mr. A.K. Somshekar, who was the chief scientist at, with, uh, with the National Informatics Center. People that stuck with the project, that stuck with the idea. And they were like, come what may, you know, leaders may come and go, but we have a mandate to serve the citizen and we are going to do things as best as we can for them. So there is room for the individual to do things in a way that kind of pull away. But then when the diktat comes, it comes and then you can't do anything about it. Nobody could say no to Aadhaar at any level of the bureaucracy once it was decided. So I don't know if that helps answer your question, but that's kind of been my experience at least. I mean, you're, you're saying in sense that there is you know, to speak against Aadhaar in some ways is to speak against what is considered to be the truth and the, the solution to everything. I mean, because any, I mean, I think if you poll any, you know, sort of uh, crowd in the urban setting first, who, who actually never participate and you know, actually get rations, everybody would say that yes, 98% of them would say yes, Aadhaar is great for BDS. So it's like a hegemony. Yeah. 
yeah people will say that but like the, they don't realize how many people are denied uh, access to how many government services because they they, do, they don't wash their thumbs with dog every day na so unke haath utne saaf nahi dhulte so unke thumbprints nahi register hote aur jab aapke thumbprints register nahi hote mere ghar mere ghar ke paas sarve nagar pune mein i have seen people denied food because thumb register nahi hua sorry nahi hum nahi mil sakta aapko so this was not the case when you had pre aadhar right Be- before that time you could show many different forms of id aapka rashtriya swasthya bima yojana ka card chal jata tha aapka ration card chal jata tha wo nahi hota tha aap proxy issuance karwa sakte the transactions online ho sakte the offline ho sakte the bahut sare tarike the so lot of those things went away because people decided to focus on uh, aadhar so definitely it was a net loss for uh, uh, the beneficiaries at least in the early stage i'm not saying that's how things are today but in those two years people really struggled yeah and though ironically the 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 explanation given is efficiency right aadha for aadha the the explanation is efficiency uh, you're introducing the rigidity uh, you're taking away all the flexibility Yeah. yeah like the challenge is not that people in the below poverty line category are coming and stealing grain meant for other below poverty line people the challenge is that people in the above poverty line category are not purchasing grain that grain is being sold on the open market and often times the bpl category person is also losing their access or in addition to this happening so that those were again some useful things we were able to show i didn't pull up those charts maybe i can if you guys want me to but I was able to show that most of the transactions that were occurring because, along with the utilization of portability, were BPL transactions. Those right. stayed stable. APL transactions actually went down. Before that, if you went and asked the ration shop, "How much grain did you sell?" All of it was 100% off-take. All of it was 100% off-take. All of it. After the system was implemented, it was 100% off-take. It was 80%. That means what was happening in the 20s? What was happening in the 20s? Fake transactions. Right. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Prashant. Great talk. Um, thank thank you. you for taking the time out. Absolutely. Thank you all for being here. It's such a privilege to be back at IMA, uh, even if it's only virtually. My career as a researcher started literally there. I owe everything that I have today to uh, uh, you know uh, wonderful, great teachers like Professor Gupta. uh who took the time to guide uh, a, a, a person like me who, who gave me some direction so i can say that much for sure when complete you know transparency like whatever i am for better or worse today it it thanks to the initial guidance i got at ima so thank you all thank you all right okay thank you thank you everyone mm-hmm. bye bye